Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. All right. So we are starting a brand new series today called Good Grief. And good, good and grief are two words when said in that order. Good grief are echoes of my mother's voice as I would do something in the house that upset her or disappointed her. It was just her sheer shame in me when she would be like, good grief, Michael. It normally was around the time I was passing gas, something inappropriate at home, and it was good grief, Michael. Um, we've taken this idea, it comes from the 1950s Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown and the Peanuts, I know that kind of dating myself, but I still watch a little Charlie Brown, even though it was from the 1950s. And it was the same kind of concept. It was the same statement of shame or disappointment if Charlie Brown did something bad in the show. But good and grief are kind of an oxymoron, right? They, those two words, they don't really go together because if you've ever experienced grief, you know it wasn't good. Yeah. It wasn't fun. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't happy. It hurt. There was pain that surrounded it. So... Sid and I have kind of been working on this project. If, if grief isn't good, if we know it's not a good thing, it's not a fun thing, can we at least learn to grieve well? Yeah. Is there a way that we can go through painful seasons of life and still honor God with what we're doing and how we're behaving? All right? So we want to start by this. We want to start by giving the general definition of grief, and then we're going to build out from there, okay? Grief is the natural response to loss. Grief is the natural human response to loss. But we have this question. Can we respond to that loss in a way that's God-honoring? And we sit here today to discuss this because, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the grief that we've experienced through life Maybe we didn't always do it the right way. Yeah. Maybe there was times that we failed, we missed it, that we've had to learn. Mm -hmm. and, and we kind of brought our resources together and our tools to talk about this today. Cynthia and I would like to take the next few weeks and discuss grief. Uh, in our 21 years together, we have navigated and, and gone through some <laughs> tough seasons. We've gone through some wavy waters of grief and Truth be told, I didn't always handle it well. Cindy probably handled it better than me, <laughs> but go ahead. Um, that's correct. I probably did. No. <laughs> I believe that most people are not taught, they're not trained, they're not ready for the circumstances that happen in life that bring you grief. You know, you, you wonder, is there a way to grieve well? Is there a good way to grieve, I should say, or... Are we just doomed to all the negative ways that you see people grieve? If you've experienced life through 2020, you grieved. It was a natural response to the loss of the way that things were. We lost freedom. We lost a sense of security. You lost community, connecting with others. But we all experience grief differently. Yeah. And what we've seen is that not everyone who experiences it does it well nor do we all do it the same. Right. So let's talk about grief. Are you ready? Point number one is... Grief, grief doesn't make sense. Nope. Grief doesn't make sense, all right? As Cindy and I navigated 2020, we would occasionally look at each other and say, what is wrong with you? Have you ever looked at somebody going through something like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. Yesterday you were fine, today you woke up like a monster. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? What are you going through? And yeah. it didn't make sense. Like, you're okay today. You're not okay tomorrow. I thought we got over this. I yeah. thought we dealt with this. I thought we moved on. But grief doesn't make sense. Why are you act this way? And we didn't realize in and of ourselves yeah. 
that we were acting any different in the moment. Mm -hmm. She's saying to me, what's wrong with you? Stop being a jerk. <laughs> and I'm like, am I being a jerk? I didn't know I was being a jerk. I didn't realize I was being a jerk. Because we were reacting to the situations and what we were feeling yeah. differently. We didn't realize that we were any more angry. We didn't realize that we were any more emotional or emotionally yeah. numb. We didn't realize that we were paying less attention to each other. We didn't, we didn't realize that. Um, Cindy kind of had a way through 2020 and, and, and even through some of the other times that when she would start to experience grief, she would like retreat into her phone, mm -hmm. into reading a book yep. or scrolling on social media. And I'm over here like, hey, uh, let's hang out. Let's do something. And it was just kind of like space ghost, right? Yeah. I mean, that was like her response to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, no, as a kid, I was always like the emotional one, you know, like the sensitive kid. And so through the years, you'd hear things like, oh, that's just Cindy, she's crying, that's what she does. So as you get older, like nobody wants to be known as the person who's crying. Cry, baby. Yeah, nobody wants. <laughs> so I would like, like to shut it off. And so you find yourself walking through a fog because you don't want to deal with the emotions that you're feeling at the time. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense, right? Because I'm not that person. I don't shut down. I like to talk out and express mm -hmm. my feelings and try to figure this out. And, and if she's shutting down, we realize that it just didn't make sense. I want to share yes. a passage of scripture with you that doesn't make sense, all right? Uh, in Numbers 11:4, it says this. The mixed group of people among them had strong desires. So they were very opinionated. They were very emotional. They were very outspoken. The people of Israel cried again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember. I remember the freedom. I remember what it was like before I had to wear a mask. We remember. Come on. Mm -hmm. All the fish we could eat free in yeah. Egypt. Now, they could eat free fish, but they weren't free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could eat freely, but they were in bondage. We remember this. We want to go back to this. We could eat all the fruits and vegetables and spices, but now our strength is gone. There's nothing at all to look at except for this bread that God is magically giving us from heaven. <laughs> right? I mean, it wasn't magic. It was a miracle. But, but this bread from heaven, now the bread from heaven was like coriander seed, and it was like delium. It looked like delium. The, the people would go and gather it and beat it and basically boil it and turn it into bread. This doesn't make sense that they're complaining about going back to slavery so yeah. they can have some meat when God is supernaturally providing for them from heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get angry at them and tell them how dumb they are, <laughs> we do the same thing. Yeah. We do the same thing. It, it just doesn't make sense, right? These people are supernaturally being fed, but they're grieving they're grieving the life and the way things were. They were grieving yeah. the loss of the meat and the spices and the food. It just, it doesn't make sense, okay? It doesn't make sense. But grief doesn't make sense. We've said that a few times now, so just keep a hold of that one. And it doesn't make sense to the person who's feeling it. Like in the moment you're grieving and you're, you don't even really know what's going on with you. And beyond that, Something that we've noticed about grief is that it doesn't have a time limit. Yeah, grief doesn't have a time limit. And that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Because almost everything has a time limit. And there are some cultures that pretty much, they do put a time limit on grief. You know, you have this specific time set aside to grieve someone who's passed away, whether it's a month or six months, a year. And when it's done and you're not done, everybody looks at you like, you're not done yet? Yeah, why are you still, work? like, why is it still bothering you? Yeah, and the person who's not experienced the grief is looking at the other person that's having the tough time and is like, how long are you going to grieve? How long is it going to take for you to get over yep. this? As long as it takes. Yeah. Really. They're like, how long are you going to grieve? And at the end of the day, you're just going to look at them and you're going to I don't know. How long is my loved one going to be dead? See, that's such a good point there. Mm -hmm. I know that, I know that. On the outside of grief, if, if you've never gone through something where you've yep. lost something very, very important to you, it's easy to look at someone who's still going on, mm -hmm. still hurting, and say, man, when are you going to get over this? You may never. Yep. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to grieve? How long are they going to be dead? Yep. How, long is, how long is their memory going to 
come up when I'm, so like, I mean, we're jumping a few weeks ahead, but we experienced a loss in the family this year, and, and the other day we were barbecuing, mm -hmm. and I'm making my, my world famous smoked ribs, <laughs> world famous <laughs> smoked ribs on the grill, right? Mm. And, and, and everyone's eating them, and nobody told me that the ribs were good. Like, nobody said to me, like, wow, best ribs ever. We were busy inhaling them. They, yeah, they were busy eating. <laughs> but I knew my mother-in-law would have told me mm -hmm. how good my ribs were. I, I knew that she would have stood by as I was doing the last based on the ribs and be like, Michael, these are amazing. This is, oh my gosh, you know? And in that moment, like, I got pretty choked up because I missed I was missing something. Now, I haven't been sitting back crying and grieving this whole time, but in that moment, I experienced grief again because it was a moment that her voice would have been there. It would have said something to me that I was looking for, that I was expecting, and it wasn't there. So there's no time limit on it, all right? And so here, here's the hard part with that. Even if you try to figure out a formula for a time limit, yeah. there's no time limit. Nope. There's no time limit. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to keep being it ruining our day. Yeah. Again, we're talking about good grief. I can still remember the good times, and it yeah. can still make me feel, but it doesn't have to ruin my whole day. Yeah. Right? You can pro prolong the devastating pains of grief by dealing with it unhealthy, by yep. disappearing and hiding yourself. And mm -hmm. throughout this series, today's kind of an overview, but we want to give tools to deal with grief because we're not just talking about death. Yeah. We're talking about relationships. Mm -hmm. When you and your friends have a fight yep. and now you don't talk for a month, there's a grief that goes on there. We're talking about losing a job. We're talking about losing a pet. Come on, somebody. Yo, man, I had to put my dog down in the middle of COVID, and I couldn't even go in. I had to sit in the car. Well, and I mean, it was, it was, it was messed up, man. Yeah. Right? We deal with grief throughout many, many different situations of life. How can we do it well, and what's the time limit? Well, John 16, 20 through 24 says it's good, read it to us. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but when her baby's born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. Men will never understand that. Ladies, you know this is true because otherwise we would never have more than one. <laughs> <laughs> So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until you know, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy, joy will be complete. complete. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. There's going to be no grieving in heaven. Yeah. There's going to be no turmoil of this in heaven. What he's basically saying is, in this lifetime, we will experience grief. Yeah. But the blessed hope, have you ever heard of the word blessed hope? The blessed hope is life eternal, is heaven. It's, it's the, what believers, Christians inherit. And in that moment, that's where all the pain, all the suffering, all the grief is removed. So there is a time of grief. There is a time that we will experience loss. But believers have a blessed hope. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we have a blessed hope that we'll see those things that we lost returned again. Yeah. And two, that there will be a time that we won't feel that pain. Mm -hmm. But before we can learn to grieve good, we need to understand why we grieve. Why do we grieve? Go ahead. Talk about this for a little bit. We grieve because the human soul was not experienced, We're not was designed. not designed, sorry, to experience death and loss. We've adapted to it, we've learned to cope with it, but God's original design was that every living thing lived forever. All right, let's go back and say it. The human soul was not designed to experience death and loss. Think about that for a second. 
the original human design. Yeah. God made Adam and Eve. He did not create them to experience death yep. and loss and grief. They were not created for that. They were created for life eternal from the beginning. So throughout humanity, we are figuring out, yeah. we are dealing with, we are coping with loss that the original design was not meant to experience. We do so because of sin. Mm -hmm. Sin has entered the world, therefore now we're having to cope with this. Yep. So let me define this. Grief, according to my definition, is humanity's attempt to cope with death and loss. Yep. Grief is humanity's attempt to deal with or handle grief and loss. And I say attempt because it's, it's hard to do something that we were not supposed to do. It's hard to make a, a sports car go off-road. Right? You get an off-road truck to go off-road. But when you take a car off-road, it's going to try to do something it wasn't supposed to do, and it's going to get tore up. It's going to get messed up. All right? So in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve, they eat from the forbidden fruit. Uh, can we just admit it wasn't an apple? All right, apples look nice in the books, but it was probably a fig because they put fig leaves on, so they probably ate a fig. Anyway, God finds them naked. God hands down a discipline. Here's what happens because of your disobedience. And then this happens. In Genesis 3, 21, it says this. The Lord God made garments of skin. Where did that come from? Right? An animal. I mean, did he just shave an animal real quick? No, because it didn't say fur. God killed an animal. God's the very first hunter. Right? God has to kill an animal to cover their nakedness. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death. Yep. And it's exemplified in the very first covering of sin. Adam and Eve sin, it causes a death of an animal, and, and it's another one of, of blood, blood covering sin. Adam and Eve put on a garment of an animal to cover their nakedness. And the Lord God said, the man has shown now that he would, has become like one of us, us being Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat it and live forever. That was the design. Yeah. That was the design. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve and all the animals in creation would live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden to work the ground from which he had been taken. God killed, yeah. And if you understand this, Death today is actually the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God. It's so that we are not locked in a fallen state for all eternity. We would not want to live forever in a fallen state. It would be okay to live forever in perfection. No sin, no sickness, no disease, no hurt, no pain of the Freemans moving away from us and we're gonna miss them dearly, <laughs> right? None of that, that, was, that would have been perfect creation, God's perfect design. So the human soul originally was not created or designed to feel the sting of death. And we've struggled with this. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says this. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then this saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh, death is your victory? Where, oh, death is your sting? Watch. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a blessed hope. Yeah. There's a blessed hope in the victory of Jesus. Yeah. It wasn't until Christ's entrance into the world that we got a good grief. 
per se. There was no good grief. There was no such thing until Jesus came in. Prior to that, we had the law of sin and death. So basically, you prayed and you hoped that your loved one had done enough, had been good enough to make to heaven. We prayed that they lived by know. the law. Yeah, yeah, but you didn't know. Yeah. Jesus Christ was the answer to the void that was in the human soul toward grief. Now, does this mean that if you know Jesus, you'll never grieve? No, no. that's not what we're saying. You're going to still experience grief. But we don't have to grieve the way that people without hope do. In first say that again. Don't just say that again. <laughs> we don't have to grieve the way that people without hope do. That's good. Yeah. In First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, it says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Say that again. So you do not grieve. So that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Loud. <laughs> With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Woo! Leave that up for a second. Leave that up for a second. Therefore... Anytime there's a therefore, you got to find what it's there for, <laughs> right? That's biblical teaching, biblical doctrine. If yeah. you see a therefore, what's this there for? Mm -hmm. It's there for this last passage, talking about heaven, talking about the afterlife. Therefore, because of everything we just said, encourage one another with these words. We need encouragement, not yeah. stupid encouragement. There's stupid encouragement. They're stupid Christians. Well, God just needed another flower in heaven. Stupid. Yeah. Don't say stupid stuff like that. Mm -hmm. All right, don't say stupid stuff like that. Don't, don't, don't try to excuse something for God. Don't, 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 don't try to excuse sin in the world. Don't excuse it. Come on, don't say stupid stuff. Here's one of the greatest statements that someone said to us when we, were, when we lost our mom and we were trying to figure this thing out, this person said, I lost my mom too. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going through because I don't know the relationship that you had, but I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a great statement. Because we, you know what we all try to do? We all try to say, oh, I know what you're going through. No, you don't. No, I know what you're going through. I lost my mom too. No, no, but you didn't have the relationship we had. Yeah. You talk bad about your mom all the time. Right, right, I'm just saying, loss is as unique as the individuals experiencing it. Yeah. I don't know what you're going through. I know you're experiencing loss. I know you're grieving, but I don't know what you're missing about that person. Mm -hmm. No one here is missing the fact that no one said my ribs were good. That was unique to me. Mm -hmm. Me and my mother-in-law, we had a food thing. Right? Anyway, go ahead. I hijacked your points. It's I. <laughs> so we have three points for you today. We have three points, yes. One, our hope is in eternal life. We have a hope in eternal life. Yes. We have a hope in an eternal Savior. Amen. And we have a hope in an eternal community of believers. So that means we got to tell some people and bring some extra people to heaven. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. We want to have a party in heaven. Yeah. So we have to believe in this eternal community of believers. We won't have this eternal community of believers if we keep our faith to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I, 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 in my mind, I think a great response to grief is to tell somebody else about your blessed hope. Mm -hmm. Right? I can make it through a funeral and do a funeral the way that I do them because I have a blessed hope of the believer. 
that we have an eternal life, that we have an eternal Savior, and that I have eternal brothers and sisters who are going to be in heaven. Yeah. Say that right here. <laughs> Next week, Mike and I are going to continue our talk on grief, and we're going to provide you with further tools on how to good grief. I just wanted to hear her say my name. <laughs> Hey, uh, I want to take a moment um, before we close this out, this talk, and we're going to kind of do the same format next week. Next week, we're going to talk about um, our first major encounter with grief. Mm -hmm. um, it might be somewhat emotional. Triggering. Um, huh? Triggering. Triggering. It might be triggering for someone who experienced that specific kind of loss. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't handle it well. I didn't do it well. And so it's going to be very transparent. Um, in the last few years, we just actually really started talking about it. Um, some of the things that happened in our relationship that I kind of spiraled out of control from this thing and, and not understanding it, not understanding myself, blaming her. So next week's called, Whose Fault Is It? When I experience grief, whose fault is it? Because it's not my fault, it's got to be somebody else's fault. And we're going to talk about that. Openly, candidly, honestly, yep. hopefully we'll be married after it. <laughs> but I want to take a moment and, and have a spiritual moment. Pray. Pray for everybody in here. Mm -hmm. Pray for the grief that you've experienced. And we're going to talk about maybe week three. That there's also like this new kind of grief that we begin to experience. It's like anticipatory grief. Someone in your life is older, they're sick, and you begin to grieve that because you know they're going to pass, and it begins to affect you now, and your life freezes, your life just gets stuck, and because you're just waiting for it to happen, and you're locked in a grieving, and this can happen with a pet. This can happen when someone's moving. You know your friend is moving and you already begin to grieve the loss of them being gone, but they're still here. Um, and we just don't realize that we're experiencing that. We just don't sit down long and say, wait a second, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? What thoughts are going through my mind? And, and understanding what's happening in each season of life. So can we pray with you for a minute? Father, we come to the name of Jesus and Lord, we lift up every individual in this room today, every individual watching online, that Lord, we first pray that great is their peace and their undisturbed composure, that they would have perfect peace as their mind is stayed on you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our comforter, our guide, our ever-present help in a time of need. Help us to lean in on you, Holy Spirit, in the tough moments of life. Help us to not retreat into our emotions, to retreat into our minds, to retreat from those who could encourage us with the words spoken by Paul. Help us to be open and honest with what we're feeling and be open to receive words of encouragement and receive the help. Lord, you promised that you are the mender of the brokenhearted, that you would mend the wounds of your believers. So today, God, we put our trust in you. We take on your yoke and your burden, for it is easy and it is light, and we give to you the pain and the grief that we've tried to juggle with, we've tried to figure out, we've tried to fix, we've tried to suppress. Help us to lean in on you. I encourage each person today that they are strong and courageous. Fear not, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The favor of the Lord is upon you. His hand rests upon you. You're blessed in the city. You are blessed in the field. You are blessed in your business endeavors, and everything you set your hands to will prosper and be successful. Lord, we thank you for your word today that it will not return to you void in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. We love you. Have a great weekend. 
Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.